Boo Earns, because this is the second time I'm making this movie. What's up? From the 403 to the HAZ. I just spent 25 minutes doing this lesson for you, only to realize at the very end that I'm a big ditz, and I put some numbers incorrectly here. So, because what I was trying to do was, um, so we're going to start dealing. You haven't done this yet, so I'm sorry. We're talking about function transformations right now, okay, with our A, our B, our H, and our K. And what I wanted to do was create a table of values for the sine wave, okay, our baseline function for the sine wave, and I wanted to fill it out using some points off of our sine wave, or which I would just get from the unit circle, because our sine wave data points come from the unit circle. So for sine, Sine is always the y coordinate of each point along the circle, right? So when x is 0, my y is 0, right? For sine of x, because it's, it's on the x-axis. And then what I did was I said, okay, instead of just doing 0, you know, just doing all four corners here, I said, well, why don't I add in an extra coordinate at pi over 4, pi over 4, which it basically splits each quarter into two. And you have your unit circle, you have all those measurements, so we know that the coordinates for x and y are the same, or the, the magnitude, the size of the x and the y components are the same because it's a, an equilateral triangle. But what I did wrong was I, I said it was 1 over 2, but it's 1 over root 2, two okay? And so I went through everything with an assumption of 1 over 2, which had the potential to confuse the living bejesus out of you. So I just want to redo this video. In the last hour of my Friday, which is a Thursday, before Easter, to do right by you. So, what happens is, and you, we've been through this, but like, we go from zero to pi over four uh, angle from my starting point, and I know that a pi over four, that's my x and the y are the same, and they're both in positive lengths, so one over pi, over, one over root pi, and one over root, root two, and one over root Okay, so I can add that as my next coordinate on my sine wave, right? So this happens at pi over 4, I have a y of 1 over root 2. The next coordinates up here that I'm going to use, I could, I mean, I could split this up as many ways as I want, but I'm just splitting it up into each coordinate to a half, and I'm adding this. So at pi over 2, the next point on the x, uh, I'm at a, a y of 1. My y is completely vertical, so it's all y now. Okay? And then at my next coordinate, when I add another pi over 4 to split it in half, this point happens at pi minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. That's the angle from my initial arm, right? So over here, this, is, this angle right here is pi over, 3 pi over 4. And there, it's going to be the same magnitude for y, and y is still in the positive, so it's going to remain 1 over root 2. So you can see we started at 0, we went up to 1 over root 2, all the way up to our peak, and now we're coming back down. So our next point should be 0. And as we come down, we're at pi, and my y is flat, so it's 0. Okay, and I can keep going. Now if I add another pi over 4 to split this guy in half, if I add another pi over 4, I'm going to be at 5 pi over 4, and at 5 pi over 4, now I'm in the negative y, so the magnitude is still the same, it's still 1 over root 2, but it's negative 1 over root 2. See, so now we're crossing over the 0, now we're going into the negative, so the next point I'm assuming will be what's going to happen at 3 pi over 2. And it is negative 1. And then if I add pi over 4 to 3 pi over 2, I get 7 pi over 4 for my next x. And there I have a, I'm still at negative, I'm still in negative y, negative 1 over root 2. And then at 2 pi, one full rotation, my y goes back to 0. Okay? So I could have chosen whatever I wanted for x, and I could have, you know, thrown that into my calculator, but this is the non-calculator method that we're really trying to get here. 
Okay, so this is this is this is the table of values for a sine wave. And I could go from 0 to pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2. pi over 4, and 2 pi, okay? And then at 0, 0, I'm here, so this is y, this is x. So at 0, 0, I'm here, let's say the max is 1 and negative 1. So at pi over 4, I'm at 1 over root 2, so I'm around here. At pi over 2, I'm at 1. At 3 pi over 2, I'm back at 1 over root 2. At pi, I'm at 0. 5 pi over 4, I'm negative 1 over root 2. At 3 pi over 2, I'm negative 1. At 7 pi over 4, I'm negative 1 over root 2. And then I'm back to 0. And if I graph that, so if I connect the dots, I get a nice, pretty little sine wave that looks something like that. Not as ugly, but something like that. Ish. Okay? Now, B and H. Well, B is going to compress or elongate this, stretch it out, and H is going to shift it left or right, okay? A and K, A is going to amplify it, make it bigger from top to bottom, and K is just going to shift it up and down. They have the exact same play as they have in every other uh, transformation unit we've done. So what I'd like to do now is take a problem from the textbook, which is sitting over her, and... Just create a new table of values based on a transformation of y is equal to sine of x. So let's find a bueno transformazione. Okay? Let's find one. Okay. Let's just go for it all. No. I just don't know how. Uh, well, okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go for it all. Okay. So let's say I have my transformation is y is equal to two sine x plus fifty degrees minus ten. Okay. So, based on this transformation, I'm gonna create a new table of values. And that new table of values is going to be gotten or achieved by simply transforming each x and y coordinate. Now, just like every other unit of transformations, we apply our A and our Bs first, because they're going to be multiples. They're going to be uh, stretches and compressions. We're basically going to multiply our Ys by A and our Xs by B. Now, if A and B are 1, we, don't, we can ignore them. But if there are any numbers other than 1, we have to transform them. A, if A is 3, we multiply each y by 3, and then we add our k, okay? Now, B is different, right? Just like it's always been. B is different in that we're going to multiply all of our x's by 1 over the absolute value of B. So if B is 4, we're going to multiply all of our x's by a quarter. And then we can add our h afterwards. If H and K are invisible, if there's nothing there, they're zero, we don't have to shift them, okay? Whereas if A and B are invisible, we assume they're one. Great, good talk, glad we had this talk. Let's do some stuff. So here, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what all of these numbers correspond to. Two is clearly my A, so my A is two, and my K is clearly negative 10. Am I still filming? Woohoo! Okay. K is negative 10. So I'm going to multiply all of my y's, my y coordinates by 2, then I'm going to subtract 10. My h, I don't have anything in front of the bracket here, between sine and the bracket. So my b is 1, it's, I can ignore it. My h, however, is, is positive 50. And remember, h is always the opposite of whatever sign is there. So I'm actually going to be shifting 
all of my x coordinates by 50 degrees to the left. However, I'm in radians here, so I'm going to convert this into radians by 50 degrees times pi over 180 is negative 5 pi over 18. Okay, so I'm going to, all I'm just, I'm not going to actually be doing any um, uh, stretching of my x coordinates, but I will be shifting it. Basically, I'm just going to shift my whole graph to the left. So let's go through now and, and get a new table of values for this transform function of that. So let's do my first coordinate for y. y is equal to 0. I'm going to multiply y by 2. So 0 times 2 is 0. Minus 10 is negative 10. And let's do the x now. 0 minus 5 pi over 14 or over 18 is minus 5 pi. Over 18. That's my first coordinate. Negative 5 pi over 18, negative 10. Next coordinate. 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2 times 2 is 2 over root 2 minus 10. 2 over root 2 minus 10 is the same as 2 over root 2 minus 10 root 2 over root 2, common denominator, and this becomes 2 minus 10 root 2 over root 2. That, oh, it's so friggin' ugly. Okay, but that's it. And I could rationalize that, but I don't feel like it. I shouldn't have, I'm not going to rationalize, I'm just going to leave it like that. It's ugly, but whatever. So this, this is this is the coordinates. Two minus ten root two over root two. Now, I don't think you'd ever get anything this nasty on a test, but here we are. Two over root one. So two one over root two times two is two over root two minus ten. It's, it is what it is. It is what it is. And that happens at x over or pi over four minus 5 pi over 18. So, see in the textbook for this problem, they're just asking you to tell them what the shifts are, what's happening. We're actually creating a new table of values. So we're taking it up there. And if you can do this, you pretty much can do anything. Because that means you have a really good handle of what's going on. Um, so pi over 4, minus 5 pi over 18. Common denominator here is 36. So it's 9 pi over 36, common uh, equivalent fraction, minus 10 pi over 36, equivalent fraction. 9 minus 10 is negative pi over 36. So this next coordinate is negative pi over 36, at, and y is 2 minus 10 root 2 over root 2, all over root 2. Okay, this, is, we did, this, was a, this one will be a lot easier. Again, the next one will be nice because it's a whole nice number. So on the y, remember, I'm applying my a first and then I'm adding my k. 1 times 2 is 2, minus 10 is negative 8. And that occurs at pi over 2 times 1, my b is 1, times 1, so it's negligible, minus 5 pi over 18, minus my h. And 2 goes into 18 9 times, so 9 pi over 18 minus 5 pi over 18 is 4 pi over 18, which is 2 pi over 9. So this happens at 2 pi over 9. At 2 pi over 9, I'm at a y of negative 18. I had to think there for a second. I don't know, I just don't know. Okay. 
1 over root 2. 1 over root 2 times 2 is 2 over root 2 minus 10. It's going to be the same thing as this here. Right? It's the exact same coordinate, so we can just put it up here again. So it's 2 minus 10 root 2 over root 2. And that occurs at 3 pi over 4. There's no b, but so I'm going to subtract my h because h is negative. It was positive there, which means it's, it's negative. It's moving left. So minus 5 pi over 18. This is going to be 27. 4 goes into 36 9 times. That's the common denominator. 3 times 9 is 27 over 36. Minus 10 pi over 36. That's equivalent to that is 17 pi over 36. Okay, and you could just keep going, and I'm not going to because it's a waste of, well, I've already wasted enough time on this, but you could just keep filling out this table, each one. Let's do the last point, just for, for fun. This is gonna be the same as this. So it's gonna be negative 10, because zero times two minus 10 is negative 10, and as you can see, we, um, we're shifting this to the left. So pi minus five pi over 18 is 18 pi over 18, that's pi, with the common denominator of 18, minus five pi over 18. This is pi, this is this. I'm just creating a, a, the same denominator of 18 so that I can subtract this. And in doing so, I get 13 pi over 18, okay? And I can keep going, and then I can graph this if I was so inclined, which I would not be in this case, because these are really nasty numbers. But I can, that's how I can, that's how I'm, that's how I'm essentially, that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm, I'm breaking it down to nuts and bolts here. Now you can start understanding what each shift will be, right? Basically in the, uh, in the textbook, they're basically just asking you to figure out what these are, right? What's the phase shift? What's your stretch? What's your, your, your vertical shift? So, but we're actually going through it, we're actually calculating it. So we're taking it up a level. Okay, now let's do another one. Now let's do the, the, the graph of y is equal to cos. Okay. Y is equal to cos of x. a transformation. Okay, let's do one that includes B now. And I'm going to do the one I just did. Okay, this one, this one basically is all, it kind of teaches us everything, except there's no reflections in here. We have no negative A's or B's, so that's fine. Y is equal to 3 cos 2x minus pi over 6 plus 7. Okay? Now, this is illegal, this, this format, because I cannot have a number in front of the x. If I have a number in front of the x, it's got to be on the other side of that bracket. That's, otherwise, I don't know what my b is. So I've got to convert this into this format by probably factoring out this 2 and then doing what I can. So 2x minus pi over 6, if I was to factor out that 2 to get it in front of a bracket, that means I would have to multiply, what would I have to multiply 2 by to get pi over 6? Well, pi over 12. Because 2 times pi would be 2 pi over 12, and then I could divide the top and the bottom by 2. 2 pi over 12, divide the top and the bottom by 2, I get pi over 6. So this is a factored version of that. That would be my b there now that would be my h. So I am going to rewrite this over here. Over here. Y is equal to 3 cos of 2 x minus pi over 12 
plus 7. Okay? Next step, what are all my letters? A is very clearly 3. K is very clearly 7. So all my y coordinates, I'm going to multiply by 3, add 7. B is now very clearly 2, but remember, we have that inverse relationship. So I'm going to multiply all of my x coordinates by 1 over 2, by a half. I'm multiplying all my x's by a half, and then h is the opposite of that sign, so then I'm going to add pi over 12. So when I'm actually, because this is negative here, it means I'm actually moving towards, I'm shifting it towards the positive x. So that's what I have to do to each of them. So let's start doing it. But first, we need to fill out our table of values here. Cos. What happened? What's cos of 0? Well, that means that I'm all x, so it's going to be a 1. I have the coordinate right there. At pi over 4, I'm, I'm in the positive x, so I'm positive 1 over root 2. At pi over 2, I have 0x component, so I'm at 0. At 3 pi over 4, I'm in the negative x terrain, so I'm negative 1 over root 2. At pi, I'm negative 1, I'm all x coordinate. At 5 pi over 4, I'm still in the negative x, so I'm negative 1 over root 2. At 3 pi over 2, I'm no x. At 7 pi over 4, I'm negative 1 over root 2. I'm still in the negative land. And then at 2 pi, sorry, I'm in the positive. I was thinking cos of, cos of, cos of 7 pi over 4 is 1 half. It's in the positive. 1 over root 2. And then this is a full 1. We're back to 1. Okay, that's... This would start at x is 0, we're at our max, then we come down, and then we come back to our max. That's what, what, that's what that is. So now let's start, let's start transforming those. Are we still filming? That's right, we are. Perfect timing. Okay, we're doing great. So let's do it. Let's do the first y. 1. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 7 is 10. Now let's do the x. 0 times a half is 0, plus pi over 12 is pi over 12. So my first coordinate is at pi over 12, y is 10. Uh, next coordinate, 1 over root 2 times 3 is 3 over root 2, plus 7. So plus 7 root 2 over root 2 to make it an equivalent fraction. And this gives me 3 plus 7 root 2 over root 2. Really ugly. I would never give you something like that. And the textbook wouldn't even give you something like that. But I took their problem and I just I jacked it up. So it happens. So this is, the next coordinate is 3 plus 7 root 2 all over root 2. And that occurs at pi over 4 times a half. So pi over 4 times a half is pi over 8, and then I'm going to add pi over 12. Pi over 8 plus pi over 12, using common denominators of 24, is 3 pi over 24 plus 2 pi over 24, which is 5 pi over 24. So this is 5 pi over 24. That's my next coordinate. I'm going to do two more coordinates and then you guys are on your own. Okay? Here, y is equal to 0. 0 times 3 is 0 plus 7 is 7. And that occurs at pi over 2 times a half, which is pi over 4. And then I'm going to add pi over 12. Pi over 4 plus pi over 12 is 3 pi over 12, using equivalent fractions. 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times pi is 3 pi, plus pi over 12 is 4 pi over 12, which is pi over 3. So this happens at pi over 3. This coordinate, negative 1 half, or 1 over root 2, times 3 
is negative 3 over root 2. And then I'm adding 7. So negative 3 over root 2 plus 7 as an equivalent fraction over root 2. I have to multiply everything by root 2 over root 2 for equivalent fraction. And then this becomes negative 3 plus 7 root 2 over root 2. So negative 3 plus 7 root 2 over root 2. Real, real ugly numbers. And I should rationalize this, but I'm not going to. I don't want to. You can't force me. I am the teacher now. I am the teacher now. Okay. 3 pi over 4. I'm doing the x component now of this coordinate. 3 pi over 4 times a half is 3 pi over 8 plus pi over 12. 3 pi over 8 plus a pi over 12. I have to use equivalent fractions. 8 goes into 24 3 times, so it's 9 pi over 24, because I multiply the top by 3. I multiply the bottom and the top by 2 there. 2 pi over 24 is 11 pi over 24. 11 pi over 24. And I could just go down and then I could plot this if I had any <laughs> real effective way of doing that and do it. Okay? I think that's all I'm going to show you guys. I think if you can understand how to do this, then everything else will, will kind of fall into place. So, and I just chose arbitrary points that I knew were nice and clean because they're right on my unit circle and points that we've talked about a lot. That's all I was doing is using, pulling off x coordinates and y coordinates that are nice and clean and not fractional or whatever, even though that is kind of fractional. You guys have a great weekend. It's Easter weekend. I am going to do nothing. Bye.